thank you. So I'm com coming back up here for our last session, um, which is um, we finally open, we had it already in the discussion, but really to in go to the global scale to GEO uh, with the Cape Town uh, ministerial event ahead of us. Um, that's very timely to discuss also this, and in particular with the geo, new GEO post strategy, which will be endorsed there. And without further um, ado, I will introduce our first speaker who will actually um, provide us some key points of the post-25 strategy, which is called Earth Intelligence for All, and that will be done by Mark Dowell. Where is he? Here he is. Um, please, Mark. You want to stay here? Or? <clears throat> so we're going to have three presentations and then we have again time for our discussions. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so I think we've, there's kind of been in the background of many of the discussions in the last two and a half days, this new strategy in GEO. Um, this has been an effort over the last 18 months to, to put this in place. You're going to hear we're going to present it basically in two parts. I'm going to deal with kind of the first parts on the kind of the the, the main elements of the strategy, the the, the emphasis and the new uh, direction that we want to take uh, Geo in. And Sarah will be speaking after me more on the operating model, so the last sections of the, of the strategy itself, and 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 then the subsequent implementation that we need to work towards now. Um, to be honest, as I've joined some of the side sessions over the last couple of days. I don't know if it's as a reaction to drafts of the strategy you've already seen or if it was already happening in the Europe geo community. But many of the discussions that I've heard are at least in feeling, in, 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 in direction, very similar to what, what the direction the strategy is going. So I suspect that we're already advanced of the curve, as it were, in, 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 in addressing this from a European perspective. If I can have the, do I have a clicker? Yeah. Um, so I think I've got about four or five slides just to kind of emphasize the main points. The first in the strategy is to underline that we're building on some strong foundations, that we have these strengths within the geo community. And there are four main areas that this address. Um, and I think at least from a European community, and I should mention on the, on the committee, there were about four or five of us uh, that I would say came from the EuroGeo community. So, um, and actually one of the two co-chairs, Samantha Bur Bur uh, Burgess from uh, ECMWF uh, was kind of a part of that group of five colleagues. And I think if you look at these main headlines here, so GEO is intergovernmental, GEO is multi-scale, GEO is tran transdisciplinary and multisexual, and GEO is cooperative and adaptive. Those are very much the, um, the sentiment that we have within the European or the EuroGEO community as well, uh, as far as where things are going. And on the intergovernmental side, of course, we value this as a European uh, community contributing to GEO, but we also recognize that it's about bringing a broader partnership of stakeholders in, in addressing that. <clears throat> So the main headline, as Franz pointed out, is this idea of Earth intelligence. And we're going to come back to that in the discussion after we've heard these inter interventions. And what we wanted to do from the very beginning in our discussions, and I, I think, well, Sarah, who was involved in some of this, will recognize a lot of the first, in that kind of 14-month period, a lot of the first, I would say, eight months was really about thinking about where we were going before actually the writing and producing the content started in earnest. What we recognized was that there's been these two epochs so far in GEO. A first epoch was really about driving free and open data and, and explaining to the broader community why it was important to have this free and open data. The second epoch for the last 10 years has really been about translating that free and open data into services that could be provided to different user communities. And I think that's happened quite successfully. And we've seen this in the kind of maturing of activities in the geo work plan. And now where we want to go in the future is taking those core services, building on top of it, bringing in uh, additional information to address earth intel intelligence. Now I won't be shy, earth intelligence had uh, there was a bit of a, a, a divided community between in what people felt about it. But I think at the end of the day, 
we felt that it really reflected this transition that we hope to make and that it was up to us to basically explain to the broader community what Earth intelligence was about. And I just put there at the bottom four bullets, you can see the full definition that's included in the strategy, but there are kind of these four elements, integrated earth and social science, informing strategic decisions, designed based on, on, on user needs and across scales and sectors. And I think that is, again, reflective of many of the discussions that we've been having in the last couple of days. And as I said, we're gonna come back to this at the end of the presentations because I'd like to take your feedback as well. So that concept of earth intelligence is then translated into other vision, into the mission, and into the value proposition. So the vision, as you can see here, is a world where trusted earth intelligence is university accessible and empowers society. This idea of equity, again, if you look through the strategy, is there at many different points. And actually, at the beginning, when we were thinking about the strategy, we wanted to really put equity up front. It was even for a certain period in the title uh, of the strategy itself. But then we realized that, that, that the Earth intelligence part was really the driving motor to get to that point of, of e equity across it's also in the mission statement. Again, the mission statement re-emphasizes this point of the intergovernmental uh, uh, nature of this. And then the value proposition, to me, it's interesting because we have this value proposition, but then in the strategy, and I don't, I'm not sure we've done this in the past, we zoom in to different areas and users and stakeholder communities and redefine what the value pro proposition is for those different stakeholders. And I think that's extremely valuable and important. Of course, the strategy, there's going to be an implementation plan, as I said afterwards, but the strategy also identifies some core actions, which are about co-producing co uh, transformative programs, about increasing global equity, as I mentioned before, a key aspect, about integrating new technologies and innovation into this earth intelligence services, increasing the participation of young people, as well as investing in integrated activities for, to raise awareness. And what we also recognize throughout the process of discussion of the uh, strategy is really the strong partnerships that GEO has established and needs to establish in the future with all of the different stakeholder communities I mentioned before. So in our last session, we were discussing a lot about the value chain and um, this pipeline of activities and we recognize that again, as a fun, even at the global scale, as a fundamental part of GEO with all of those stakeholders underpinning uh, um, and helping us co-design those value chains for different applications and services. So this is the uh, cover page of the strategy that will be presented for endorsement at the uh, ministerial plenary <coughs> at the beginning of next month. And you can get the latest version uh, uh, through the link I show there. And so I think, if I understand correctly from France, we're going to transition now straight onto the next presentations. Um, and then we'll come back for a discussion on this point of Earth intelligence at the end. Yes, indeed. So as you already announced, uh, our next speaker is Sara Venturini from the Geo Secretariat, where she is the climate coordinator. We're happy to have you with us. Hmm? That has changed recently. Well, I got uh, promoted to climate and biodiversity coordinator oh, okay. because we needed you have someone. To update, you have to update your website. <laughs> Indeed, yes. So climate and biodiversity coordinator, Sarah Venturini, and you will tell us more about the implementation plan of the post-25 strategy. Please, Sarah, you have 10 minutes. Yep. Hope it's the right one. Right. Correct. Yes. Thanks. Oh, it's great to be here. Uh, it was so um, useful to hear your feedback, your input from today's discussion, from today's roundtable. And uh, it's actually my first EuroGeo participation for some reason. I should have been more involved <laughs> in the past, but other colleagues were, of course, supporting, have been supporting uh, over the years. Um, Forgive me for the very processy presentation, but someone has to do it. And so um, as Mark introduced, I'm, I'm going to talk about the implementation of the strategy. Uh, GEO is presenting the strategy um, at Cape Town. Ministers will adopt it on the 10th of November. 
the strategy has a focus on delivering earth intelligence and especially involving frontline countries and communities. The ministerial declaration that goes with the strategy um, also provides us with a mandate to develop the implementation plan to put the strategy into action. And the timeline for the development of this implementation uh, plan is approximately December to 2023 to February 2025, because um, by April 2025, we need to have this implementation plan ready for um, launch at the next geoministerial summit. The implementation plan will be developed as usual in a very collaborative way, involving and consulting uh, with the community. And this is where Eurogeo, you know, um, can support and shape the functioning of the, of the uh, future geo. So the IP uh, implementation plan will include a number of components. As you will see in the strategy document, there, there will be critical discussion around this new operating model. Um, the, this is something that is needed for GEO to deliver on, on this concept of Earth intelligence with trusted, timely, integrated and sustained um, operations and, and, uh, and data. So first of all, the, this model, this operating model will be characterized by accountability and result orientation. What does it mean? It means that uh, we need to integrate essentially um, project management best practices and, and create a prioritization framework for our geo work program and uh, for our portfolio of, of activities. And so that we can ensure that these projects are result oriented and are sustainable um, over time. Secondly, representation and voice. Uh, we need to ensure that all members and regions are represented in, um, in the geo governance. Currently, as you, as you might know, some countries are not active or not represented in regional caucuses. At the same time, some regions are missing. Um, there are some emerging efforts to establish um, new regional caucuses, such as the Pacific Geo or Arab Geo, that are currently part of a, of a broader Asia Oceania Geo. Third, financial sustainability. This is critical to you know, um, ensure the longer term sustainability and, and um, migration of um, outputs uh, to have a proper impact on, on society. Um, this entails essentially a creation of a system that enables resource mobilization for, for geo activities. And, and also um, it requires a possible change in the status of geo as you as you might know we have been um, constrained so far by the legal status of geo where um, we couldn't really um, establish partnerships and uh, benefit from broader funding opportunities so we need to rethink that a little bit fourth inclusivity transparency and participation here um, we think that operations and resources should be uh, definitely um, committed to integrating these concepts of inclusivity, transparency, and, and participation in all aspects of, of GEO's work. Um, and this involves, for instance, communication, supporting multi-language um, services. There have been many requests um, over time for, for, from different regions asking to have uh, GEO knowledge products or events uh, translated in, uh, in other languages. And so far we've only been able to support English, um, you know, working mode. But if we have the resources, this could change in the future and enable participation of, uh, of, of the people, of the stakeholders we, we need to have uh, in our community. And finally, regional and national growth. And this refers to strengthening the coordination within the regional geos and at the level of national geo to um, enhance our capacity to involve all the relevant stakeholders across ministries, across sectors, and, and foster this multilateral collaboration. And this is relevant, of course, for the Eurogeo community and, and the role of the Eurogeo secretary will be 
critical in this sense to include all the right players. So, as I said, the GeoWorld program will be one of the elements of the um, future implementation plan. The strategy, this is an extract from, from the strategy document, already sets the, the, the vision for the future GeoWorld program. And um, it should look like a transformed, well-resourced work program with uh, transformative activities that essentially demonstrate integration across uh, thematic areas and along the earth observation value chain with, with a strong focus on users. So we already have many of these elements present in the current work program, but we need to uh, take a step further and um, really unlock the, the power of, um, of collaboration. So who's going to drive this process? For those who are less familiar with the, with the geo governance, we have a lovely program board <laughs> and uh, they oversee the portfolio of geo activities and the program board will be in charge of designing the post 2025 geo World program as part of the post 2025 implementation plan. And these are some of, of the tasks that they, they're going to um, address. There has been a, a task force has been established under the GEO program board to do so. Um, they have, again, a clear, uh, clear work streams to, um, to follow. First of all, they will need to assess the, the GEO, the existing activities in GEO against the ambitions of the post-2025 strategy then they will have to identify the focus areas for, for the future geo work program. Also, and most importantly, um, they have, will have to deal with the development of a process to select, prioritize, and implement the new geo incubators that uh, um, you, you might have heard from me and, and my colleague Martin yesterday during the, the parallel sessions. And this is a cue to Evangelos to explain uh, what the incubators process uh, might look like in the future. And with these slides, I'm, I'm just going to conclude by saying that um, the process to define the geo portfolio um, of activities is underway. It's led by the program board, but there will be opportunities for engagement um, by the community and we welcome your contributions. So mark your calendars. These are some internal meetings, but the, there will be also some public events such as the GEO Symposium in September next year. And of course, the um, GEO Week and the launch of the implementation plan in April 25. So um, we actually have questions for you. And uh, after Evangelos' presentation, we hope we can uh, uh, have a, a dynamic discussion with you to get, um, to get your feedback. Uh, I don't have answers. It's just, you know, a start of a process, but it's good to, to be here and to, and to get your initial reactions on that. So thank you. And um, Evangelos is next. Please, Evangelos. Thank you very much, Sarah. And Evangelos will then debrief us on the current state of play with regarding the incubators that Sarah already mentioned. Mark. <clears throat> okay, hello everybody again. So it seems that we are moving from the big picture and the post-2025 strategy to the implementation and operating model of GEO. And now we are going a little bit further into one of those components, the incubators. This is the new baby of, Eurog of GEO one of the new <clears throat> buzzwords that has uh, triggered uh, enthusiasm, but also a lot of concern. So it's really very important that we uh, start uh, discussing uh, how to clarify more the operation of uh, the so-called incubators. 
So uh, initially the incubators were uh, conceived as uh, uh, experiment, experiments within this transition period, 2023-2025, uh, in order to create synergies and integration between the different activities within the GeoWork uh, program and also recognizing the need to work under specific nexus uh, areas to resolve uh, issues of global uh, importance. So the, the the aim of the incubators and the incubation as a process is to co-design some demand-driven uh, solutions deriving from the activities that they are already taking place uh, within the GEO uh, work program. This should be based on specific uh, criteria like the selection, I mean, of the uh, incubators, like, for example, the established demand coming from a global policy frame or other uh, developments, uh, the availability of the tools and the knowledge and the data from our community to deliver uh, operational field for purpose solutions, uh, this nexus-based orientation and the integration along uh, the whole value chains. And of course, we have to uh, mobilize resources. So also maybe the perspective and perspective of donors' interest could be part of this. So first of all, in time-wise, in time frames, the incubator serves as an experiment to show us the way and learn lessons on how to transit to the post-2025 era uh, having as a target to create a, a program that is uh, transformative and we have also to, to, to define much clearer what this transformative program uh, means. So in this process there has been already on the table different incubators proposed. Here you can see some of the themes and some of the uh, intention of the incubators that are on, on, on the table for, for discussion. Uh, two of them have already been initiated and as um, Sarah said they have already been presented by Sarah and Martin in uh, those uh, some of the sessions so I will need not stick much on the details, just mention the titles. One is the global ecosystem models and the second being the global heat resilience uh, service. So throughout the process of initiating those incubators, we have identified some uh, need to better uh, define uh, the process uh, that leads us to the selection, uh, the design and the, and the implementation of those incubators. So uh, those lessons uh, con uh, include the conceptualization and articulation of, of, of the process and the principles that should follow this uh, uh, selection and operation, but also the, the, the support that we need and the capacity building that we need from different uh, actors, including the Geo Secretariat, in order to have successful implementation and development of those indicators. So. Uh, in this aspect, and as Sarah mentioned also already, we have created a program board volunteers uh, group in order to define all these uh, fine elements that will lead to a transparent, uh, inclusive and clear process on how we proceed with the, uh, the incubator. But also part of the mandate of this uh, group, volunteering group, is to, to define, uh, to define the definitions to define the functionalities, the requirements and other elements uh, with respect to um, the incubator's initiation uh, process. And we have a strong representation from EuroGeo there, uh, entities and people that are uh, quite familiar with this incubation process. So ESAP is represented through Thierry, uh, OGC is represented, and uh, we really want to take out from also this audience a strong, uh, let's say, voice a clear message how we should really be designing this process for incubators. So, um, as, I, as I said, uh, we put incubators in the time as a transition phase, but also we should put incubators uh, within the work program because some of the discussion we are having in different groups and fora is uh, where should these incubators land in the work program at the end of the uh, day. So just uh, for informing the whole audience, this is a kind of, let's say, stratified structure of the work program. And uh, the entry point for this being the pilot initiatives, they used to be the community activities. So where, this is where uh, everything uh, starts. When this becomes a little bit more mature, they can move to the initiative stage. Uh, we, we kind of think it like the gears, the machines that produce, uh, you know, the different products and the processes within the geo that 
prepare us to go more uh, towards uh, operational uh, delivery of services, which is then the flagships, uh, which uh, deliver you know uh, some concrete results, but not just the flagships, uh, to link to some uh, global uh, mandate. So sometimes, and of course, at the basis of all, it's the regional geos. This is something uh, new, new with respect to the rest of the structure, which has to reflect the power, the convenient power of the different regions and the ability to take decisions and influence the whole process. So sometimes we realize that there is some stagnation within the different layers. And if you are physicists, you, uh, I mean, it's easy to, to relate this with a different stage of the atoms. And in order to change the stage, what do you need? We need some energy. You need some force in order to mobilize, you know, all this power and move upwards. And this is where incubators come, to my opinion. The incubators is the energy, is the energizer, the facilitator. Uh, we can call it uh, whatever you want, but this is something that has to cross um, the program uh, and uh, towards a global uh, mandate that needs to be selected at some point. But up to now, we have been doing it a little bit inwards looking, and this is a big uh, mistake because there is also an outer geospace out there uh, which consists of many uh, UN organizations, other international organizations, big companies, etc., that can really contribute to this uh, effort. So it's part of our job to be able to attract those players. And as we move onwards and we move uh, to a, a bigger level of coordination, these uh, atoms, these electrons, should be also absorbed in the process in order to reach uh, you, you know, uh, the, the scope. So at the end of it, this process, these incubators should land somewhere. And this somewhere is not really clear, but maybe it's good that it's not clear because at the end of the day, it can end up to a flagship, which is the upper level of our structure, or it can go outside and be uh, adopted by governments or be commercial, etc. So we shouldn't mind as soon as the process uh, up to that point can be transparent and uh, with some uh, rationale. So I think that this picture somehow synthesizes discussions that we have been doing in different forms and it's a very good way to justify how we want to be transformative because this is transformation within the project, the program, the geo program, but also transformation uh, in the whole, uh, you know, uh, environment also outside our uh, program. So uh, I think this is uh, not written on stone and we expect that the Eurogeo community will be able to really guide us through this process and come with something which is uh, acceptable and will really guide us through the post-2025 era. So thank you very much. Thank you very, thank you very much, okay. Evangelos. Um, so we still have half an hour time, which is very nice. So we still have time for discussions. Um, we, um, we really want you to be able to raise whatever issue you want to raise. Um, but we also thought we do this a bit in the spirit of really trying to engage you like we did in the first session. But we don't have time now to go back down to the round tables. But to do this in a bit different way, we thought we, we do not ask you to ask questions. I will ask our speakers to ask questions to the Eurogy community to motivate you or to encourage you to raise your, um, raise your point of view or your input, provide your input to GEO and to the GEO activities. Um, so these are the set of questions that Sarah put up, um, no matter what, but I will ask first Mark. Mark, what is it that you would like uh, the EuroGEO community or what would you like to ask them to provide you with input? Yeah, okay. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I think these that Sarah have prepared are very good, but I would like to come back to kind of the real content of the, of the, of the strategy that I presented and, and to kind of understand from you how you see this idea of earth intelligence being uh, taken up both, of course, at the global level in the context of 
in the work we do also in, in Eurogeo. So, um, as I said, my feeling is from listening to discussions the last few days, but even back to Athens last December, is that we're already doing a lot of what geo in, uh, what Earth intelligence is, is, is meaning, but I, I'd really like to get some feedback from all of you on, on, on how you see uh, as kind of making this transition to Earth intelligence for all. So if anyone would like to come in and give any opinions on that. Yes, Nicola. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Sarah and Evan uh, Kelos. Uh, yeah, very interesting. I think uh, uh, what we discussed also this morning uh, in different groups and uh, is going through that direction, just uh, Earth intelligence. I like the concept since the beginning. I think it's a way to increase the impact on society and uh, uh, in terms of uh, outcome. So uh, very often research has been doing research without uh, uh, increasing the impact on those that don't do research. So what is the benefit for others since we use taxpayer money to do research? So how we give back this to the society? That, that, that is clear and I think also the, the way we are approaching the discussion to build up the Eurogeo, Secretariat of Functioning, the scope, vision, goes in that direction. It's not clear to me how in all this we have this geo incubator. I've been seeing those things also in the EXCO. It's not clear to me how to collocate and the scope of this incubator, our project that are moving autonomously in overlap to already what is going on in the rich working environment, not only in Europe, but elsewhere also. So, that, that is something that it's not clear why the Secretariat as part of the GeoPost25 strategy pushed for this and why only the one that listed, because the list can be quite long actually. If we talk about in terms of a triple planetary crisis and now we link this to the effort of other program like UNEP, UNEP is doing the same thing, very similar. Uh, with reference to the three planetary crises. So that's, there is a lot to, to discuss, but. Thanks, Nicola, for that. And to be honest, I think, um, I, I, I agree. I also think that there's, uh, there was some idea that everything needed to be an incubator at a certain point, which I, I think is not the case. There are some cases where, where there's a very direct policy request for providing data and information uh, uh, to reporting. I mean, I think Evangelos started to explain how, for example, the prioritization process uh, uh, at least would be addressed and things like this, but there are still probably a lot of open questions on, on how this incubator process fits in. Is that correct, uh, Evangelos? Yeah. Absolutely, and actually this is the work of the volunteers group to clarify and actually we would like to hear all the concerns coming from this community in order to try to, to resolve and make a process that is clear. But answering your initial actually question, why should this happening? And um, I would say that we have a lot of initiatives, we have a lot of activities taking place. There, many of them are working in silos and we are recognizing duplication of efforts. So if you see that this stagnation does not really move somewhere, you have to somehow uh, inspire them and initiate a way that they can actually work in synergy and reach uh, you know, a higher uh, objective. So I think this is the mechanism, not of your mechanism, the need behind something like an incubator. Uh, so I see it as a, as a prog progress, a progressive power for, for the world program. Yeah, okay. Tom, you can. Thanks, Nicola. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, oh. I have a I question think, about more te technology-wise, like technologically speaking, if you talk about incubators, you have today these massive uh, infrastructures for processing geospatial data. 
Google Earth Engine, uh, Microsoft Planetary Computer. Um, and kind of in US, the universities took this Google Earth Engine as a, a platform to do the research, right? They accepted it. And what is your relationship to that? And um, do you recommend using it uh, in geos, in this geo framework you have or not? And if not, why not? Okay, well, that sounds like the type of question that could get me into a lot of trouble uh, as, a, as a European civil servant. But um, I think that in the context of the strategy, we definitely were not trying to provide any clear direction on what type of infrastructure should be used for implementing this idea of Earth intelligence. This could potentially come out of the work of the implementation plan. My personal view is that as a European kind of community contributing to GEO, we should also take advantage of infrastructures that we are developing in Europe. Uh, uh, and um, so, uh, of course, in the context of, of what we're doing in Copernicus uh, <coughs> with the CDSC, uh, but also other investments such as the Open Science Cloud and things like this made in, in the digital uh, uh, um, uh, strategy. So. Um, of course, I realize that there are still a lot of research and things that are using these other platforms there, but I think in the next years, as our infrastructure elements are further consolidated, we should do our best to take advantage, at least in Europe, of our infrastructure. But as I said, the strategy didn't make any clear claims on what infrastructure solutions should be used for implementing this Earth intelligence concept. Uh, I think there was a question, another question here. At May the I add oh, sorry, on go this ahead. point? Yes, so essentially, geo and the strategy in general, we are agnostic, um, technology agnostic, and uh, there's no prescribed um, path uh, on how to develop and implement these incubators or the, or the current geo activities, but we have been open to all sorts of collaborations, and this is also the strength of geo. We've had um, several programs collaborating with uh, Google Earth Engine, Microsoft, Planetary Computer, and Amazon Web Services, providing grants and free licenses to um, a number of um, you know, projects in developing countries to support work on sustainable development, climate, and disaster risk reduction. And those have been very successful. And uh, the thing is now how to migrate them uh, properly into the geo portfolio and how to ensure that these um, efforts are recognized going forward in the post 2025 world program. So we, um, we are open. Um, the, the program board is considering ways to select the themes for incubators to uh, essentially uh, provide the, the framework for these collaborations to happen. And the reason essentially why the Secretariat has suggested this approach to respond to Nicola's question is, is exactly this, to integrate the existing multiple, maybe sometimes duplicative efforts present in the GEO portfolio. We have, I don't know, five activities uh, looking at water. We would like to actually merge them and bring uh, somebody from the outside world so that we can actually um, align with the work that UNEP is doing, that um, uh, UNDRR is doing on, on water. And so we can have something a bit more relevant, more coherent and more impactful for, for the society. Yeah. Okay. Well, just a couple of comments on this incubators concept. So I must confess that I'm back to the geoactivity since a few time. But in any case, what I think this is probably the, the real transformation, because as far as I understand them, they are pointing at, let me say, lo solving local problems uh, somehow, because and this is also connected to the co-design approach. So to do a real co-design, you need to have the end user, not someone that represents the totality of users of certain. So what I think is that maybe we could have some flexible development of some local cases in incubator for 
which you have the data, the competencies, the group that are, and then try to have them flexible to try to export them in other local situations. Because it's no long, so the, we have other initiatives for GEO that are making uh, world global databases, etc. I think the transformation we need really to go local, and this incubator thing seems to me the the right thing to do, complementing what GEO is already do, doing with global users like UN agency or uh, agreements. Uh, but then that's for me is the, the next step because this is the actual way in which you make usable for someone in the world what is developed uh, globally. So that couple of concepts that may be inserted into the discussion to, to define how this will work. Thanks, Giovanni. And yeah, I'll, I just wanted to respond quickly to Giovanni, and then and then I'll pass the uh, the floor here. Um, I think I, I I agree completely, Giovanni. And I think I, I was trying to see where Thierry was, but um, oh, there he is. Uh, I think uh, Thierry can confirm that they have been asked to uh, participate to some of the early development of some of these incubated processes e exactly to make sure that the co-design methodology developed in eShape is kind of an integral part of that process in, 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 in the initial development of the incubators. Uh, sorry, Evangel, she wanted to go. Brief, a very quick reflection. I also agree and thank you for your comment. And another uh, aspect of this is that we bring in the nexus approach. So many of these activities are targeting you no know, vertical to something specific. The point here is that, for example, in the hidden health, you have the hit priority, which is addressed by many activities. Then we have the impact on the health, then we have to bring others. And then you have the rest of the urban pressures like air quality and stuff. So actually, you are trying to build this also concept of uh, nexus in the, in, the, in the play. <coughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Actually, I, I, I would like to ask all of us if it's only me having the feeling that uh, we are forcing ourselves to uh, <clears throat> use new terms, uh, but saying or expressing actually what we were trying to develop for years now. I see the term earth intelligence and actually I'm wondering how different is this from what we were saying all these years that we want to transform it to wisdom, to a clever service, to a useful product, and having at the same time a clever way to engage the user. What we were needing all this scientific community, and not only all of these years, is how we arrive to get the communities engaged, the service providers, the scientists, and the users actually receiving the outcome, and the outcome is the wisdom, is the information, is not just data processing or a very nice model. Is it what we call today Earth intelligence? If it is the same, then we have to stick in the lessons learned from the past and try to see what is the next steps. If it is something else, sorry if I look very naive. I was reading the post-2020 five geo strategy. I was struggling myself to understand what are the new points added? Because it's again there, <clears throat> and I close, saying that much about engagement, about <clears throat> the entire, and the entire value adding chain engagement into that. <clears throat> and the useful services to be developed, but that was the Eurogeo initiative five years ago again. That was the same project, and even before Eurogeo, in Horizon 2020, in FP7, in FP6, we were starting the same terms. So again, sorry, I would like just to understand a bit more and about the incubation of Agilus. Yes, sure, the incubation is always useful. We have many, several incubation programs already running. Let's learn also what has been done from the past in all these incubation actions and try to build on top of that. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Harris. And I think you could have been an excellent member of the of the writing group for the strategy, because those were exactly the type of discussions we had uh, about uh, over the last 12 months. I guess from my perspective, well, first of all, in particular, you saw we had this data for all services, for all Earth intelligence, for all. 
my personal impression is that the transition between services for all and earth intelligence for all is basically a continuum. It's not uh, a revolution, it's an evolution, yeah? Um, and I think the main elements, I, I, I put up the definition, but the main elements that I kind of see is this idea of actionable information, yeah? And, and again, it comes to what Giovanni was saying before, this kind of multi, if you, if you think of combining this kind of actionable information, multi-scale and integrating earth science data with uh, social science data and everything, that is kind of the cumulative evolution from services to earth intelligence, yeah? So it's um, uh, even in, I mean, even if, if we think of programs I'm familiar with like Copernicus, the core services are not always delivering earth intelligence. They're delivering core services of earth science data for specific areas. You still have to build on top of those with last mile applications, whether they be downstream services for the commercial sector or a gap filling service for tailored policy applications. And so it's that additional mile, as it were, that provides that additional actionable information multi-scale uh, social and earth science. So as I said, to me, it's not so much a revolution, it's more of an evolution from services to earth intelligence. It's just this uh, additional contextual data and making sure it's actionable at different scales. So uh, yeah, uh, I, that's, and I, I suspect you're right. In this community in particular, we've been thinking this way already for the last five or six years. So it's nothing, it's not, uh, as I said, a revolution, it's more an evolution. I don't know. Correct. And uh, for, for those who have been involved in GEO since forever, they will recognize how this has always been the ambition of GEO, but we've never really um, managed to, uh, to do what we wanted. Uh, in the beginning, GEO was all about um, infrastructure and interoperability. Then it's evolved to um, open data services and now it's about um, operational um, earth intelligence so like mark said it's an evolution what uh, the added value that we see in this in, in incubators concept is also the fact that the geo secretariat would help the um, these incubators with uh, fundraising and with um, closer coordination and support, which was not the case for the existing GeoWorld program. GeoWorld program initiatives and activities that are currently there are some sort of you know, voluntary effort um, and uh, the secretariat is helping you know, as we can. But we hope and we think that the strategy and the implementation plan will enable the resources for the secretariat to really support the activities in the work program, which will make a difference for sustainability and longer term uh, um, uh, outcomes. Very quickly, just to say that I... Yeah. Evangelos, can I just have a show of hands if there's anyone else that wants to come on to these points, because then we would like to uh, well, move also to question. some of Sarah's points. So first I'll take Evangelos and then I'll come. There's also a question online that I would like to take off the evangelist. She's okay, so yeah. very, very quick. I also see another uh, reason behind, uh, and I'm putting some social lens now, that this community actually needs probably some uh, revamping. Uh, some new inspiration and some new vision. It is evolution. There are new elements that have been identified, for example, involving the social sciences in this. But if we speak the same terms that you used to talk, you know, 10 years ago, maybe we will not be able to reach, uh, you know, our, our target. So I see also this as, a, you know, a, a turning point that we have to restart things, even though the core objectives, you are absolutely right, are more or less similar and with, with some new elements, but we cannot build upon only the failures and the bugs. We have to give a new vision. Okay, so we had Audrey on okay. also online. Uh, Audrey, can you pose your question? You should be hearable here in the audience. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we do. Oh, perfect. Thank you for accommodating me uh, online. Um, I think, uh, you know, uh, my questions were more or less answered uh, already, but I, I will still ask them because 
this is, you know, from our experience uh, at Your Blue Planet, um, implementing very tiny, tiny incubators. And my questions are, you know, how do you make sure that you will answer the user needs? And as Giovanni was saying, not only, you know, the, the super users, the representative of users, but users themselves, how do you integrate shorter term projects? Because we know that, you know, in science, uh, the, the, the time frame is very different from what we're looking at when we want to do these incubators. And, and I think Sarah just answered, you know, what is in place to make sure uh, to ensure the sustainability of the incubators, not only themselves, but also the input data that will feed the incubators. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. And as I said, I agree. I think Sarah answered this to some degree, but also, as I mentioned before, and this is an important European contribution to this, the co-design process that was developed in eShape is, of course, making these links to very specific users at even local and, 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 and uh, immediate scales. So um, I think, again, that, that contribution that we're bringing to the incubator process should be very helpful. Yes, if you'd like to come in. It was Audrey Asson, I think, from Mercator, just to mention. <laughs> Bente wanted to come in, yes? Here. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm a bit um, concerned about this incubator results. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because I, I don't understand exactly how um, it will, I think it will really create a significant burden on the geosecurity targets. Um, what I really would like to see is uh, more core activities, more supported. I think uh, one of the uh, legitimacy of GEO is to bring on board new users, new potential service providers from all parts. It's really the core. For me, it's really a strong value. And uh, if the GEO Secretariat has more time to uh, find money and so on to fund them and to support, in fact, the already existing uh, contributors to GEO, they have more less time to onboard the new capabilities, to promote these capabilities, and to uh, and and board a new, new communities. One example, over the last two years, the private sector engagement of SME MIS, as you say, is dormant. I would be pleased to see something on this side. Thank you, Emmanuel. And to be honest, I mean, I'm not, I think the strategy is not uh, making any uh, statements contrary to what you're saying. So to me, what will be important would be that you bring these opinions now into this task for program board task force that is developing the implementation plan. I mean, I see, I think you make some very valid points and actually I, I would tend to agree that the, the, the resources are probably best placed in, in bringing in these additional stakeholders and, and, and processes. So I, I think it would be good that you, you bring these things into the discussions in the task force. Uh, I assume you agree, uh, Evangelos, with that. Um, so finally, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Thank you, uh, Ben Tenilia. We here from Norway. Uh, well, first I have to say, Evangelos, it was a pleasure to see all these references to uh, physics and uh, the space as an astrophysicist. Um, the incubator, uh, the, as as uh, you said, Haris, um, the, the things that and you, Mark, the things that we have been doing in Geo family has been, we have, done, we have done it and we are doing it in the member countries and the participating organizations. So, uh, so I don't disagree. I think it's, uh, you know, it, it might be a way to engage um, uh, in a new way to inspire. However, and the, you probably know what I'm going to say now, is the core of GEO is to promote, to advocate Earth observations. There is no other organizations in the world who has this particular role. Now, Sarah, you said, well, you need to engage UNEP, et cetera, et cetera. They are members of GEO, so they could participate and contribute through their membership. Um, and and the, the, we need, in order to succeed with the incubator and with the work program, we need to focus and to help with um, sharing data, facilitating data management, um, you know, to help with the, the concrete, the, the do the dirty work with data, because it's not happening by itself. The devil's in the details. And this is what we, I think that GEO's role should be focused, we should focus even more on that. 
we were having this um, uh, in this um, group work, it was said that we should be proud of the geo data sharing principles. What, so we started with Landsat as an inspiration in geo, and then look what we did with Copernicus in Europe. And so having this voice to maintain this voice of open data sharing and I think this, we, we, I'm afraid that we, we might lose, lose focus on this part. I don't disagree to uh, sort of have some more energy into the work program, it's fine, but please don't forget this, um, this core of, uh, of GEO. Thank you. No, we won't. <laughs> And uh, I, I, I agree as well, and I think we need to be careful how we communicate uh, these things because I'm not sure, and Evangelos, you, you can perhaps confirm, but it's not that every new initiative that we include in the work program has to go through an incubator. I, I don't think that's the, that, that's the intention, or I would hope it's not. And also, I think we should be careful not to kind of the, these in, in, in incubator initiatives are getting a lot of attention and emphasis and, and resources as well being, being invested in them from the Secretariat. This shouldn't be to the detriment of the other core values of GEO, but also the other aspects of the work program that are already providing services and need to evolve to, to, to do so even better. I, I don't know, Franz, yeah, if we should... More. Okay, we'll take one more question point here, and then I know that Sarah also had a few additional questions that maybe we should put up in case anyone wants to react. Um, I just have one question. I, I'm used to Eurogear, and from what I'm hearing, there seems to be a slight move towards a European silo. And it's a global product, what we produce here, which we should be proud of. We've developed world-leading skills, which we should be proud of. And I think we have a duty for two things. One, to make sure that the, the global community uses the product that we have, because it's probably the best in the world. It's certainly the most secure funding. And secondly, that the skills we have derived are available to the global community to use other global products. So we're selling not just the product, but our skills. And if we, if we focus too much on doing European things, on European products, in European geographies, we're not fulfilling what we should do as a duty to the, to the planet. Yeah. I mean, when I heard the, we were, I was having a discussion at the coffee break before, when I was hearing the reporting back from the, uh, break, the parallel groups yesterday, um, one thing that I commented was that I thought we were missing the opportunity to show the link between the European and global uh, dimensions in, 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 in many of them. So I, I agree with that. I, I'm not sure that I'd say we're becoming a silo. I think actually that a lot of the efforts that we undertake here, and if you look across the work program, by the way, a lot of the global initiatives, uh, if you think of things like GeoGlam, the global uh, wildflower, the Global Pla uh, um, Human Planet Initiative, uh, and a lot of these areas, we're bringing both our data and our expertise and skills to those global products. So we're doing it. I'm not sure that we're making the links as clear in discussions like we're having in the last two and a half days here. Uh, and we already said this after Athens, that we really need to show how where Europe can provide kind of, not leadership, but just kind of a path for, for, for the development of these global products based on both our skills and, and our data sets. So I, I completely agree with that, and I, but I'm not sure we're creating a silo. I think that's a bit... Yes. Well, we are doing leadership as well. I mean, I, I didn't... Yeah, I mean, it's not so much... I think in many of the global initiatives, we are showing, taking leadership positions there as well. Blue Planet, we had a colleague online from Blue Planet before. That's a clear example as well. Fabio wanted to come in. In the meantime, can we put up the other slide with the discussion points from Sarah? I would like to get colleagues to just react to those. Fabio? Uh, yeah, just, just to say about the incubators, um, I guess the challenge will be to 
really break down the walls rather than be building another silos. There are already many activities, not only in, 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 in Eurogeo and Copernicus, uh, in Geo itself, there is EO for Health, uh, WHO, um, UNEP was mentioned, they had a data expert group uh, a month ago about, uh, and, and, and they had breakout groups in that the meeting and they, the people there themselves were tasking UNEP to basically solve the same problems that in these two days uh, we, we, we discussed here in Eurogeo. So if the incubators are about building yet another platform, uh, perhaps that, that's, I'm, I'm not sure that that's the solution, but if it coordinates all the other activities, then, then it's welcome. Just a quick reaction to that. Um, I give you the example of the Global um, Ecosystems Atlas. This is exactly what we're doing. We are building on existing geo initiatives like GeoBond, uh, GeoFOI, uh, GeoLDN, and so on, and bringing in these players that are doing uh, already um, monitoring of ecosystems as global initiatives like um, Global Forest Watch, Global Mangrove Watch, and so on, and are necessary uh, for the discussion. We can't reinvent the wheel, we can't reinvent a new platform. We're just trying to streamline what's already there and give Geo a new relevance because we are losing, we have been losing that a bit over the, of the past um, decade. So by engaging more closely with these partners that are members of GEO, that are partners of GEO, we ensure that we stay relevant, essentially. One more. Okay, yeah, we've, we're about to finish time. Yeah, yeah. So we'll just take one more and then I'll pass back to France because we're, go yes, ahead. Yes, very quickly. I think we talked a lot about how to engage with users and new communities, but also getting back to the energy that Evangelos was mentioning before, I think we should also consider how to involve with the youth. And this was discussed quite a lot in Geneva, but we didn't touch upon it in uh, this meeting. So I was also wondering what's the strategy of Eurogeo on getting also on board new early career scientists and more young people. Well, it's definitely in the geo strategy, as I pointed out to you for post 2025, it's one of the key actions in there, one of four, five actions. But I don't know if anyone has, um, I don't know, Thierry, in the context of, of your thoughts around Eurogeosec, did you have any specific activities that you saw engaging the youth uh, and, and bringing them in to the, or anyone else? If, oh, Lionel. To move, use your mic. I tried to provide to all our PhD students a mandate to fill a DMP, very concrete activity. So there are Earth observation in the energy domain. They are using EO data. So in order to get acquainted with this approach of being part of a bigger thing, so try to fill the tool that has been developed in eShape and concretely try along the three years of your PhD to revamp this data management principle because you are using your data, you will produce some potential result, and you will generate new data. So all the historical as well, legacy of the data you're using should be put into some concrete action. So yours, PhD student, can basically concretely be doing exercise regarding this activity, which is under the GEO umbrella. Excellent. But yeah, just to say, I mean, your point is taken and maybe we can think of a dedicated session or something at the next Eurogeo meeting where we, we address these points. Thank you. And I just wanted to point out to Anna that, for example, the Hidden Health Incubator from its initial design has been uh, taken into account this needs and its plans also for youth campaigns in the different pilot cities that is going to start to being uh, implemented. So this is nice because actually it shows that there's a mechanism that can absorb needs like that and put them in place. And a little bit shortly reflecting on Pente's uh, comment uh, before, we really have the different players in the GEO program, but we see that it's not always uh, easy to have them work together. Even if we talk for a collaboration in a theory, the ideas are uh, plentiful. But in order to implement, you need a project, you need a call, you need a platform. So 
this is another uh, reason why incubators can be really facilitators and resources mobilization is also an inherent property of the incubators to search for additional funding for doing so. Thank you very much. I'm afraid we have to come to an end with this discussion and also with the Eurogeo Workshop 2023. Thanks a lot. Thanks to all the speakers. Big applause. Thanks to all of you for engaging in this discussion.